Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light, says the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence is considered one of the patron saints of the city of Rome. St. Lawrence was a deacon and a martyr. In those days in the early church, the deacons had uh, more of like an administrational function in the church. So kind of like the Pope today has the Curia with all those cardinals who have the different responsibilities in the Vatican ranks, right? They used to be given to the deacons and there were seven deacons of the city of Rome and St. Lawrence was one of those deacons. In the year 258, there was a persecution that broke out against the Christian faithful throughout the whole Christian empire, right? Throughout the whole uh, Roman Empire, Christians began to be persecuted. And so St. Lawrence obviously knew that this was coming, right? And eventually his life would be in danger. Interestingly enough, what the Christians were accused of, right, the crime that they committed in terms of the Imperial Rome, is they charged them with the crime of odio or odium humani generis, right? Which means hatred of the human race. Right? This is what the Christians were accused of, which is kind of interesting. Right? In our modern age, we are more and more seeing that. Uh, many of the modern atheists in the 19th and 20th century, people like Karl Marx and Friedrich Nietzsche, Sigmund Freud, right, and the like, it wasn't so much that they didn't believe that God was real, right, from a metaphysical perspective, more so they hated the God of Christianity. They thought that the God of Christianity taught weakness, right, a false understanding of humility. Karl Marx thought that Christianity was responsible for um, the oppression of many different peoples because nations and peoples, and especially the poor, were not standing up for themselves right, because they were trying to be humble and obedient. And so in our modern age, we're kind of seeing this again. We're beginning to see it again in the 21st century with all of these crazy ideologies about what it means to be human, right? about the rights of human life, and about the different genders and about the understanding of human sexuality, all of these different things. The strange thing about our modern age, more and more it seems, it's not so much Christianity that's becoming under attack in terms of dogmas and doctrine. It's what does it even mean to be human? The culture is becoming so lost in that. And so often the church is seen as an enemy of the human race. You guys have heard me talk about modern psychology before. Not that psychology is a totally depraved endeavor, but oftentimes psychologists seem to think that they know better than 2,000 years of Christian tradition, right? Encouraging sinfulness because man needs to have those desires fulfilled. Or in terms of abortion or same-sex marriage and the like, it's not just that the church disagrees with our modern age, but more and more, Christians are seen as the true heretics who should be persecuted. And this is the woke and cancel culture that is happening to us. So in the days of St. Lawrence, it was similar. Christians were not just seen as one other religion. They were seen as enemies of the human race. 
St. Lawrence, when he was finally persecuted, the emperor knew that he was, uh, had a great amount of authority in the Roman church, and so the emperor wanted to wanted St. Lawrence to give him the riches of the church. St. Lawrence was in charge of a lot of the different liturgical vessels and also in charge of the church's finances. And so St. Lawrence kind of went along with it, and he took the emperor and his men through a tour through the city of Rome. And instead of finding a great treasure of gold and silver at the end of that tour, he took them to a slum where the poor were residing. Right? And he told the emperor, this is the true riches of the church, which of course made the emperor very upset. And so St. Lawrence was martyred. He was a unique martyrdom in that he had to be burned alive. Right? They put him on a grill and they burned him alive. And as the story goes, as he was on the grill, he still didn't lose his cheerfulness and his joy, right? And he told his executioners that he was now done on that side, so they needed to turn him over, right, like a hot dog. St. Lawrence is a very inspiring example. Obviously, he intercedes for the church today and intercedes for the city of Rome. But the greatest thing that we can learn from St. Lawrence, obviously, is that he was living in a similar age to our own, right? An age full of great wickedness and debauchery an age of great false ideologies, right, in which Christians were seen as enemies and experienced persecution and suspicion. All of us, if we are truly living the faith and we are truly standing up for the faith, we will experience the same things, right? Like even at daily mass, one of our members leaves church because she's upset about the homily, right? As happens. Right? But we need to be strong and courageous and particularly Right? We need to maintain our peace and our cheerfulness in the face of evil. Christ told us that we will experience trouble in this life. He has told us that we are living in the realm of the evil one. Right? In this world, the devil has an immense amount of power. And so as Christians, we need to avoid this whole thing about walking around with our heads down or complaining about how much we're persecuted. Right? We need to maintain the peaceful cheerfulness of St. Lawrence and the confidence in our faith, the confidence of our God. We shouldn't be seen as people who are just pessimistic and sorrowful and sad and angry all the time at our modern culture, right? but rather show forthing the joy of our faith. 